Hi, I'm Miriam Williamson, and I want to talk to you about climate change. One of the pillars of my candidacy is the realization that nothing is going to fundamentally change until we are willing to fundamentally change. Taking an incremental approach to this catastrophe that looms is not going to take us where we need to go. President Biden likes to call himself the climate president because there are indeed some healthy investments in green energy in the Inflation Reduction Act. However, let's be very clear. The president has also given more oil drilling permits even than Donald Trump did. Plus, he approved the Willow Project, the $8 billion ConocoPhillips oil extraction project on the north slopes of Alaska. If you put those oil drilling permits together with the Willow Project, they together nullify any benefits of that Inflation Reduction Act and those green energy investments. In other words, it's not enough to invest in green if you continue to invest in dirty. And make no mistake about it, this is now a threat. This is now a threat to our children, to our children's children, and to their children. Why? What could happen? I'll tell you what could happen. Entire swaths of continents could become uninhabitable due to the heat. In that case, you have massive implosion of ecosystems, of economic systems, of food systems, and that could result in perhaps hundreds of millions of climate refugees. These things are no longer looming. These things are upon us. These storms are upon us. This suffering is upon us. These droughts are upon us. And my candidacy represents a cry of the heart, and it represents the absolute intention that we will no longer go along with this madness. Now, if you vote for Donald Trump, if you vote for the Republicans, you vote for the basic view that this is basically a hoax anyway, and that, um, well, we'll do what we can. My candidacy is for those who say enough is enough, including the policies of Joe Biden, which are, we're going to do it, we're going to take an incremental approach. When it comes to the dominance of big oil on Washington, it doesn't matter at this point whether you're a Democratic president or a Republican president, those guys play along, and I will not play along. During my four years, I will declare a climate emergency, and we will begin a mass mobilization from a dirty economy to a clean economy. A just transition, mind you. Now, what does that mean, a just transition? It means that we can't forget that there are thousands of our fellow Americans who make a living, and in many cases make a very good living, in businesses that are at least indirectly associated with fossil fuel extraction. That is to be honored. As one man said to me, I make over $100,000 a year. Am I going to start making, what, $15 an hour to install solar panels, Ms. Williamson? He had a right to ask that, and that man will not be forgotten. The truth of the matter is these are jobs in technology, jobs in research, jobs in manufacturing, jobs in development, and we can move these things in a lateral way. You know, I want to tell you a story about World War II. When World War II began, when President Roosevelt knew we're going to have to get in, we had no army to speak of, and the British had none at all. Meanwhile, Hitler had been building up his military for five years, and every time he invaded another country, he absorbed their industrial capacity. So Roosevelt knew, I, I need ships, I need planes, I need tanks, what am I going to do? Well, what are you going to do? You go to the great industrial centers of the United States, where they do build up industrial equipment. So, of course, he called the big three automakers. We know about those guys even today. He called them to the Oval Office and he said, gentlemen, I need this many ships, I need this many tanks, and I need this many planes. Now they all said, oh, President Roosevelt, we are patriotic Americans. Sir, once we sell our quota of cars, we're going to get you those planes, we're going to get you those tanks, we're going to get you those, those ships. And President Roosevelt looked at them. Eyewitnesses say, you know, that famous puff of his cigarette holder. And he said, gentlemen, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I need this many ships, and this many tanks, and this many planes, and you're not going to manufacture another car until I have them. In other words, it was a national emergency. And in that period of national emergency, you temporarily override the otherwise dominant strictures of the free market. What is at stake here is human survival. What is at stake here is the survival of our children, our grandchildren, and their children. You know, everywhere I go on the campaign trail, I say to audiences this, 
If you are an older person who has said a younger person of childbearing age say this, or if you are a younger person who has said this, please raise your hand. And please keep your hand up hot so that everybody in the room can look around and see this. And the question is this. Have you heard the words, well, under normal circumstances, I would be thinking of having children. But given the state of the planet today, I don't think it's a moral thing to do. I have never seen a room where less than a third of the people raised their hands. And at one, in one room recently, over half of the people raised their hands. And then with the hands held high and people looking around to see the other hands, I could tell that people were surprised because they thought, oh, I thought it was just me. No, it's not just you. And the fact that so many of America's young people are thinking that under normal circumstances, they might be considering having children, but given the state of the planet, they don't even think it's a responsible moral thing to do to bring children into the world. This is not normal. There are blinking red lights everywhere. And that's what my campaign is for. My campaign is not for people who think, ah, you know, we've been through rough times before. We'll, we'll plug along. No, that's not why I'm running. And that's not what kind of president I would be. You know, Eleanor Roosevelt once said in a speech when everything was going on with the depression and the approach of World War II. She said, this is not an ordinary time. Americans are living like frogs in the boiling water. At what point are we going to say, no, we got to jump out of here. We have to cut the cord with an aberrational chapter of American history. And one of the dominant themes in that is complete denial regarding the state of our climate and what it means for the earth. It breaks my heart when I think this country actually did elect Al Gore, who was a world-class environmentalist. But it goes even further back than that. When Jimmy Carter was president, he put solar panels on the roof of the White House. And one of the first things that Ronald Reagan did when he got there was to jokingly take them off. <laughs> so funny. Not funny at all. The joke has turned tragic. Under me, we will have a mass mobilization, World War II level, mass mobilization a just transition from a dirty economy to a clean economy. We will massively invest in uh, solar and wind and all of the things that form the actual clean energy alternatives to fossil fuels. And we will ramp down. We will not be giving federal permits to fossil fuel extraction. It's simply got to stop. This is not the moment to be ramping up fossil fuel extraction. This is the time to be ramping it down. And when I am president, we will. And they're going to say about me exactly what they said about Roosevelt. Ah, oh, she's a socialist. She's a dictator. All that stuff. No, 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 no. I will be a president and I will use the powers of the presidency. I will not abuse them. I will not overreach, but I will use them. And I want you to know how I feel about such things as this so that nobody will be surprised. It's time to change. And when I am president, we will.